Hey there guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock, it's a Monday, which means it's time for a five by five. Now, if you don't know what five by five is, the idea is I talk about five topics related to magic. I give myself five minutes to talk about each topic. There is a timer down below, and when the timer hits zero, I move on to the next topic. So it's, it's quick, it's snappy, you never know what you're gonna get. Now, I know that everybody is expecting a Jay Sankey five by five special. I said on the Q&A on Sunday, there would be a Jay Sankey five by five special, and the previous week I said there was going to be a Jay Sankey 5x5 special. That Jay Sankey special will now be moved to the following Monday and the reason is uh, David Roth unfortunately passed away a few days ago. Now if you don't know who David Roth is, he is without a doubt the best coin magician in the world and, and he's passed away. It's terrible. When I found out, I was told by Alan Rorison, I didn't even know and, and it felt like my entire world had fallen away. And the reason is, he has been such a big influence on my career. I consider myself a coin guy. And one of the reasons I consider myself a coin guy is because the first proper book uh, that I got on magic was David Roth's Expert Coin Magic by Kaufman and Greenberg. And uh, it was such a big influence on my career because up until that point, I was doing... Uh, uh, coin magic that was nowhere near as good. And David Roth opened my eyes to what is possible with coins. So instead of doing the Jay Sankey 5x5 special, I'm going to be doing a David Roth 5x5 special. I'm going to be performing some of my favourite uh, David Roth routines. I'm going to be talking about David Roth. I'm going to highlight to you some of my favourite tricks. And this is a celebration of David Roth's life. Uh, this, this whole episode of 5x5 is dedicated to David Roth, the greatest coin magician that ever lived. So one of my favourite David Roth routines is hanging coins. Uh, you know, David has done so much through the years. He's pioneered work with coin boxes. He's pioneered work with uh, copper silver coins, with, with everything. I mean, he is just absolutely amazing. But he was the guy that made edge grip practical. Uh, up until that point, people didn't think of edge grip as practical, and then he came up with the concept of, uh, of hanging coins. Now, I know that since David has done this, uh, people like Kiana Harbottle have taken it and gone in a completely different direction, but David was the first guy, really, who said, hey, hanging coins, this is actually something that's a viable thing that you can perform close up, and hanging coins is something that I have done for years. Now people are a little bit scared of it because of edge grip and they think that edge grip is angly. Edge grip is not angly. As long as you make sure that you are in the eye line of your spectators, you're absolutely fine. So if I'm performing seated down and everyone's seated with me, it's absolutely brilliant. If I'm uh, standing up and everyone's standing up, it's fine. The only problem you have is when there's some people standing and some people seated. Uh, but other than that, the angles are very controllable. So let me talk to you very quickly about hanging coins, and then we'll talk about where you can learn it. So this is, uh, there's no gimmicks in this routine. This is uh, four walking Liberty half dollars. And I want you to watch very, very carefully. Um, Magicians, one of the things magicians are known for are making coins disappear. Well, here's the secret. Magicians don't really make coins disappear. They just make them invisible and then they hang them on sky hooks in the air. You see, I've actually got a sky hook right here and I can actually hang coins on that sky hook. Now, I know it sounds ridiculous, but let me show you. Look, I'm going to take one of these coins and squeeze and when I do, it becomes invisible. And when it's invisible, I can hang it right there on the sky hook. Now, here's the thing, that's one, we've still got three, but here's the thing, you can't actually take um, a, a visible coin. You got, some people say to me, wow, that's amazing. Uh, can you hang coins in there if they're not invisible? And the answer is no, which is why you'd never see somebody taking a coin and just hanging it on there like that. You wouldn't have coins floating around. But if you, if you make them invisible first, like this, you take the coin, you make it invisible. You can then take that coin, and once it's invisible, you can hang it right there on the sky hook. You see, there's two coins there, that leaves us with two. I'm going to do this again. Watch. Two coins, two to go. Watch this next one. This one here is coin number three. All I have to do is squeeze, and that one goes right there on the sky hook. So there's three coins on the sky hook. There's one coin left over here. Watch these coins. If I just take them, throw, and catch, that's when all four coins come back off that sky hook. Now that is hanging coins. And you know what? I've seen so many magicians try to work out how to make the last coin vanish. 
Um, there you go. I was trying, I've, I've seen so many magicians try and work out how do you make that last coin vanish? You know, there's so many people that have tried to do this. People like Joe Reinflisch, uh, people like uh, Garrett Thomas, to name a couple, have worked on that final coin problem. And you know, from my point of view, the routining of this is perfect. You don't need to make this coin disappear. You've made the first three coins vanish one at a time in a very clean way. They see that your hands are completely empty every single time. This is as close to a complete vanish as you get. They're expecting that fourth coin to vanish. They're expecting it. So instead of making that fourth coin disappear, you very cleanly show you've got one coin, you grab the other three and you've got an instant reproduction of those three coins. I know that some magicians don't like the whole concept of hanging coins in the air, but honestly, this routine was absolutely groundbreaking. And if you've never learned hanging coins, it really is something that you should learn because it really opens up the possibilities and it's such a clever use of edge grip. So the question is, where can you learn? this well the nice thing about David Roth and, and we're very lucky in that he has put so much material uh, published so much material over the years so obviously there is his big book expert coin magic you've got the original coin magic book by Kaufman and Greenberg written by Richard Kaufman which has got sections from lots of different coin magicians but there's a huge section uh, from David Roth uh, what else have you got you've got um, the New York Coin Guys put out a set of like 25 DVDs and it's all of the work from people like David Roth, Jeff Latter, um, uh, Mike Close, not Mike Close, sorry, um, uh, Mike Gallo and Michael Rubenstein. That's on there as well. So it, there's so many different places you can, you can get access to seeing David Roth perform, which is amazing. And if you just go on YouTube, you can see a lot of his performances. But if you're looking for something to learn and you don't do hanging coins, it is such a super commercial routine. And for me, at any rate, it's an example of just how clever and brilliant David's routining is. And it's not just, you know, a simple coin vanish, but it really is so much more than that. And that's Hanging Coins by David Roth. So one of David Roth's uh, best known routines is the portable hole routine. If you haven't seen it, it's absolutely amazing. He takes a velvet hole, he takes a coin purse, and it's a perfect example of, of his genius when it comes to routining effects. I remember the first time I saw it, I was absolutely blown away. You know, the whole idea of coins coming out the purse frame. And up until that point, I'd only seen coins appearing out of the purse frame, but he had this whole thing where coins were appearing out of purse frame, then they would disappear into a hole, then they'd go back into the purse, then they'd all go under the hole. Absolutely amazing. Now, David, at least in his early years, put out a lot of routines that involve lapping. Uh, which was fine back then, not so good for uh, the places that I perform. So I wanted to actually show you a performance of the portable hole, but I'm not going to be doing this. Ryland is. Uh, this is actually a video of Ryland doing the portable hole. Now, this is a slightly ver a different variation of portable hole because this is my variation of it that Ryland does. Uh, this, it, it's designed to be done standing up, so there's no lapping. There's no impasses that you need in this routine. It's a stand-up routine, and I've added a shell to make it uh, you know, a little bit cleaner so you don't need a shell or at least a little bit cleaner in the places that I perform. So have a look at this. This is Ryland performing David Roth's Portable Hole. My name's Ryland. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm the Kid Magician. Wow, that was a really high one, that one, was <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's it? Yeah. I've got an invisible book. A, an invisible what now? Purse. <laughs> the top's not invisible because if the top was, um, I wouldn't be able to find it. But the bag is. Okay. If you need anything inside the bag, you're invisible until I take it out. Okay. Do, do you believe me? Not at all. Okay, well, you obviously don't know what, what that is. Look. That's a coin. Yeah, a pure silver one. <laughs> <laughs> do you see the second one anymore? No, right, there's nothing in there. Yes, there is. What? That's two coins. No, they're not two. There's not? <laughs> That's awesome, buddy. Yes. Three coins. Three coins, an invisible purse, and a portable hole. A portable what? Hole. What's, what's a portable hole? It looks like a piece of felt. Well, it's a portable hole. <laughs> okay. People, you, magicians use it to make their coins. Really? Yeah, I'll show you what I'll show you what I mean. Okay, yeah, 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 sure. I'll grab the first one. Yeah. Throw it in there. What? I'll do it in the second one. Okay. 
Yeah. That's just crazy. And I'll do it the last one. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's three coins gone into a hole. Yeah. Mate, that's crazy. The portable hole has a connection with the purse. So if you drop something in there, it'll go back into the purse. Really? Yeah, look. That's ridiculous. Yeah. So the coin went back into the purse? Yeah. Remember there's three. What? That's another one. That's ridiculous. Do you know what most people think I do? What? They think what I do is I grab the coin and when they're not looking, um, I put it under there. Is that what you do? No. You don't do that? No. And I'll prove it. Okay. Well, where's the third coin? <laughs> That's brilliant, right? That's awesome. But now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Do you want to see what happens if I throw it into a Yes, please. Hmm. What happened? It goes in there. What? I'll do it the next one. Do it again. That's not gone under there. <laughs> now, I'll put the last one in my pocket. Okay. In your pocket? Yeah. Okay. Well, when on your shaft on it. Okay, yeah. yeah. And they all go back. That's great. That's really but do cool. Do you want to know how it works? Yeah, can you tell me? Yeah, you use an extra coin. You use an extra coin? Yeah. Oh. Can you see it? I only see three, a hole, and an invisible purse. Probably you don't see it it's so big. <laughs> so big. That's mahusive. Yeah, it's called it. You can get bigger coins with that. I've seen it. Bigger! <laughs> That's like a dinner plate. <clears throat> yeah, dinner plate. But thank you for watching. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to Facebook. Bye-bye. I'm the Kid Magician. Bye-bye. So when I performed in restaurants a lot, I did a lot of David Roth routines. Probably half of my restaurant set was David Roth routines. And I used to do this routine all of the time when I was in restaurants. I used to carry a close-up pan around with me. And I used to do Wing Silver, uh, then David's version of Chinka Chink, and I'd finish off with his Wild Coin. Uh, and it's three routines that go really well together. So I just wanted to perform these for you, just so you can see some of the routines that David Roth has actually created over the years. These three are really commercial. So let's have a look at that right now. Right, so I've got four coins. These are American half dollars, 50 cent pieces, silver coins, four coins. Uh, eagles on one side, Statue of Liberty on the other. And these eagles mean that these coins can fly from one place to another by magic. Now I want to watch, I'm going to make a fist here, make a fist around these four coins. All I have to do is touch my thumbs together. And when I do, the first coin jumps across. Now it was over there, uh, it jumped over here. Let's see if we can do this again. We've still got three coins left. Watch and don't blink if I just squeeze like that. The second coin jumps across, that's coin number two. So we've got two coins that have made the journey, two coins that are left. Now, when I do this, sometimes people think when I touch my thumbs together, I somehow throw the coin in the other hand. This time, I'll just give it a little shake. And the third coin jumps across. That's three coins gone. That's one, two, three coins gone, one final coin left. You know what's going to happen? It goes like this, and that's all four coins. Now, the problem with magic is you didn't know what was going to happen. You didn't realize what the effect was going to be. So I'm going to do it again, but this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the coins in a square formation on the map like this. And this time, I'm not even going to touch the coins. I'm just going to cast a shadow over them, and still they'll move. What's weird is I can move that one over there like that. And then if I do this, I can move it up to there. If I do this, I can move that one over to there. I can move this one up there. And the final one goes just like that. And that's all four coins in the corner. Now, I know what you're thinking. You think, well, that's pretty good. But what else can you do with the coins? Well, let me see if I can go over here. I'm going to get myself a uh, little mug right now. I'm going to try and finish off with one last thing. You see, these are American coins. These are silver coins. But I want to watch this American coin. You see, if I squeeze... I can actually turn that coin into a Chinese coin. Now, you might have missed that, so let me do that again for you. Uh, this one's next. Now, you, you know what's going to happen. When I squeeze that coin, it turns into a Chinese coin with a little hole in the middle. Every time I do it, now, I don't have to just squeeze the coin. I can just rub it like this, and I get the same effect. That one there turns into a Chinese coin. That leaves us with this last one. Watch. If I rub, it turns Chinese. If I rub again, it turns silver. I can make it turn from silver to Chinese to Chinese to silver. Or if I put that silver coin in here like this, give a little shake, they all turn back. 
to silver. So that was my go-to set when I used to work restaurants. So I used to work a lot of restaurants. In restaurants, I find it a lot easier to use a close-up pad. When you're doing like a uh, walk around and mix and mingle and sort of banquet tables, it's not so easy. But when you're working restaurants, it's quite easy to have a small uh, close-up mat or roll-up close-up mat and go over to the table, uh, you know, and kind of set the mat down. And I used to do that whole sequence. I used to start off by taking the coins out, having them examined, doing wing silver. Then I'd go into uh, sort of the shadow coins thing and I'd finish off with um, uh, the wild coin. The nice thing about this is it's all regular coins, but it showcases something that I think is very interesting, which is David Roth's material is designed to link from one routine into another routine into another routine. Uh, and I think it's important that when you do that, especially with coin magic, you have the routines build. So in this case, when you've bought four coins out, you've had them examined, you've had them jump from one hand to the other, and it's like, well, that's pretty good, but this time I'm not even going to touch the coins, which gives you a reason to then move into another routine. And then you say, well, what else can I do with the coins? And it gives you another reason to move into that other routine. These, these routines are all using regular coins. There's no gimmicks, there's no extras. And the wonderful thing about David's routines is, and, and he has published so much magic over the years, he hasn't got a problem using gimmicks. I meet some coin magicians and they go, oh, I'm a purist. I don't use gaffs. I think David's attitude towards coin magic is um, he will do the best possible magic that he can do. And if that involves using a gaff, then fair enough. That involves using a gaff. But if he can accomplish the same thing without using a gaff, then fair enough. He's going to do that as well. So I don't know what level you are in your coin magic. But I really advise you, more, now more than ever, to go out and find as much David Roth material as you can and just immerse yourself into it. That's how I got good at coin magic. I just immersed myself in everything that David Roth does. Now, do I do all of David's routines all of the time? Absolutely not. No. However, learning all of his routines has given me a good understanding of coin magic so I can then create my own magic. And that's important. So if you haven't seen any of David Roth's routines, the question is, where should you look first? What should you look into first? Well, here's a, here's a few different things that you should look at. It, this is going to be, in my opinion, the three best tricks that David Roth has ever created. And these are something that all coin magicians should study. Now I'm gonna give you a few honorable mentions here. Obviously, I wanna talk about hanging coins. I wanna talk about portable hole. David Roth's work with the uh, the coin box is outstanding. Up until David Roth got involved in the coin box, it was literally just, um, uh, you know, the, the classic routine. And he came up with techniques in order to really just take that in a completely different direction. Um, the other thing that uh, I, I would suggest looking at is uh, his shell coined across. Now, so many magicians do a coins across in the hand using a shell. It's all based on David Roth's handling. David Roth's shell coins across is probably performed by more magicians than I know. In fact, if you look at my master coin routine that I put on my parlor DVD, that is based very heavily on David Roth's shells coined shells coined shelled coins across. There's also winged silver, uh, which is an amazing coin. There's so much material that he's done, it's unbelievable. Those are the honorable mentions. Let's have a look at the top three. In third place, is the sleeve. Now the sleeve is a great example of David Roth having a hook that gets the audience interested. Rather than just saying, hey, I'm gonna do a coin trick with four coins. He always tries to come up with a unique prop. He always tries to come up with a unique concept that, uh, that, that hooks the audience in. So the, the perfect example in the sleeve is he brings out this giant sleeve, you know, just this disembodied sleeve of a jacket. And he talks about, hey, have you ever heard that magicians have coins go up their sleeve? Well, they do, let me show you. And then it's a, it's a flurry of coin moves where coins are going into the sleeve and out the sleeve and under the sleeve. And you finish off with a production of a three inch coin and then you finish off with a production of a five inch coin. And it's this thinking that is brilliant. This whole idea of, of not just presenting a coin trick, but actually presenting a coin trick that's based around a prop. And you see that thinking a lot in David's work. You see it in the portable hole. I remember a routine called The World where he, he brings this little globe out that he puts down in front of him. And he's got coins, uh, uh, American coins, and then he touches different parts of the world and, and the coins turn into, uh, 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 the, the half dollars turn into the coins from wherever he's touching the world and then the coins disappear and go into the world. So clever thinking. But anyway, in third place, um, I'm going to go for the sleeve. Now, in second place, I'm going to go for Tuning Fork. If you have not seen Tuning Fork before, I really advise you to go to look it up on YouTube. 
tuning fork is absolutely brilliant. He takes a tuning fork and he uses the illusion of sound, which up until when he was, uh, up until the tuning fork, you didn't really see this, but it's the whole idea of hitting this tuning fork, listening to the sound, and you can hear the coins in his hand, and then they disappear when he hits the tuning fork. I really believe that the tuning fork routine is something that really put him on the mat, and it's something that a lot more magicians should be doing, because you can carry a tuning fork around with you, and you can do it anytime, anywhere. It doesn't matter how much I talk about the tuning fork, unless you actually see it live you won't appreciate how amazing it is so i really want you to go on youtube after you've watched this video and check out tuning fork by david roth it's brilliant in my opinion it's probably the second best trick that he's ever created and then the first trick and you know what this is probably not everybody's favorite trick but there's a reason why i love this um it's called the rainbow and it's routine, and it's again, classic David Roth thinking, the whole idea of bringing a prop out so it makes the routine bigger. Rather than just using coins, he's using another prop. And he's got this rainbow, and he talks about having coins, um, uh, you know, a, a you know, it, it talks about the rainbow and basically it's like a spellbound routine where coins are changing colour when he touches the rainbow and you get this production at the end of a, of a little pot of gold. You know, at the end of the rainbow, what do you find? You find a, a pot of gold and, and it's almost like in structure a cups and balls thing in the something's happening to the coins, something happening to the coins, something happening to the coins and then boom, there's this pot of gold. And yet, David Roth can do all of the commercial magic that you could possibly want. As I said earlier on, you know, how many people do the shelled coins across? But it's these feature pieces that, in my opinion, make him such an amazing magician. It's the idea of bringing other props into the routine. And I think that's something that as magicians we should strive to do. How can you make a routine play bigger by just incorporate, incorporating props into your routines that you've never seen before? I really want you to go check out all three of those routines by David Roth. So throughout this whole uh, David Roth 555 special, uh, I, I've talked about his work with the Akito coin box. And, and I love the Akito box, the Boston box, the slot box. And David's got so much work on it. He really did revolutionize the techniques that people use with these boxes. So I don't think I could allow this um, 5x5 to, to finish without actually showcasing for you one of my favorite David Roth coin box routines. Now, this is called Out in Out. And when I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. It had so many wonderful moments of magic. Uh, there's moves that I'd never seen before, like the spill out steel. Uh, it's just a wonderful routine. So I'd like to showcase this to you. And if you've got an Akita box and you don't know what to do with it, you want to seriously look at this. It's called Out in Out by David Roth. Let's perform this right now. Right, okay, so I've got Sarah behind the camera. Hey, Sarah, how you doing? Hey. Uh, I've got uh, a little box, and inside the box are four coins. Now, if you're here, you could examine the coins, you could touch them, you could feel them, you could check them out, uh, but your hands are busy filming. So I'm just going to show everyone exactly what's going to happen. We've got four American half dollars, we've got a box, and we've got a lid for the box. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, there's a rule in magic. Never tell the audience what you're going to do before you do it. I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm going to do. With the four coins in the box, one at a time, I'm going to try and make them come out the box. See, all I have to do is tap the back of the hand, tap the back of the box, and when I do that, the first coin actually penetrates through the hand, well, it actually goes out the box and into the hand. Now, it's not too bad, but maybe you missed it, so I'm going to do it again. The next one, I just snap my fingers. And when I do, the second coin comes out the box as well. So we have two coins that are out the box, yeah. and we have two coins inside the box. So let's do this again. Watch the two coins. I'm going to very slowly put one coin, two coins in the box, and put the lid on. Now, the next coin looks like this. If I put it on the back of the hand and snap, it penetrates through the hand, through the bottom of the box, comes out the box. That leaves us with one final coin. Now, I'll tell you something, Sarah. This last coin is not going to come out the box. Right. Instead, this coin is going to use uh, is going to make the other three coins go into the box. You've heard of a homing pigeon? Well, this is a homing eagle. Uh, that's coin one, two, and three. Which one do you want to have go first? One, two, or three? It's your choice. Two. Number two, the one in the middle, right? Watch. Going, going, gone. Just like that, right there, that is coin number two. It's not bad, right? Yep. I'll do it again. Check this out, look. Two coins in the box, the lid goes on. Now I want to listen very carefully. We've got two coins left, and listen really carefully to these two coins. That's one, that's two. Did you hear the clink? I did. Well, that's actually the sound of the second coin <laughs> going right there into the box. 
Now that leaves us with one final coin. And to make it really hard, I'm not even going to use the lid. Look, one, two, three coins. Now they go inside the box. I'm going to turn the box over. Yeah. And I'm going to make this last coin go. Are you ready? Yeah. All I have to do is wave my hand over like that. And when I wave my hand over, that final coin travels invisibly. If I told you it was under the box, would that be good? Yeah. Yeah, but you know what? Sometimes it doesn't quite make it. It goes under the lid. That can happen. In all fairness, that can happen. I'm very sorry about that. Shall we try one last time? Okay. I feel like I've, I've failed you, so let's try one last time. Look, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll put the the uh, the box there. The final coin, I'm going to make it go from the hand to the box. Are you ready? Yeah. From the hand to the box. Of course. You know, the thing with magic, yes, you have to do the unexpected. So if I'm going to do the unexpected, I'm going to snap my fingers. And when I do, yeah, I can have all four coins come out the box. And that leaves the empty box. Four coins. And that is Out In Out. So that is Out In Out by David Roth. And what a wonderful routine it is. Now, you don't need a table. I've actually done... Uh, you do need a table, sorry. You don't actually need a close-up pad. It can be done on any surface. The only thing that you struggle with sometimes is uh, is on the, uh, the load of the coin underneath the lid of the box towards the end of the routine. You can sometimes struggle um, if you haven't got a close-up pad, but there is ways to cover that, but that's unimportant. The important thing is the routining behind this. Up until David got involved in Akita Books coin, mag coin magic, everybody was doing the turnover move, and, and that's pretty much all everybody was doing. And if you look at that routine I just showed you, there was only one moment in that routine, at the very, very end, in the kicker, that's when I used the turnover. Up until that point, I was using techniques that you didn't normally see with an Akito coin box. And that's what I want you guys to understand. If there's people watching this that have never studied David Roth's material, because maybe you think it's impractical, or maybe you think it's not gonna work for you, I really highly encourage you to learn some of his routines, learn some of the magic that he does. Because even if you don't do it, even if you never do a David Roth routine ever, and to be honest, you should do, but even if you never do, the techniques that you'll learn and the routine that you'll learn is so important for, your, for you as a magician to improve and grow. So there you go, guys. That's another 5x5. Five five. Now, this has been a very different 5x5. Five five. I normally don't like to do as much performing as I have. Uh, I've done a lot of performing in this 5x5. Five five, but honestly, I think that, that the reason for that is because that's the best way that I know of paying homage to a person that meant so, uh, so much to me. And he really did. David Roth is an amazing magician. He's an amazing creator. He's an amazing performer. And even though he's no longer with us, and frankly, he left way too early, but even though he's no longer with us, I honestly think that his magic and his creations and his psychology and his coin magic will live on for years and years and years because there's people out there that perform coin magic that's either directly created by David or heavily inspired by David. And every single time one of those magicians performs a routine for anybody in the world, that's had any type of influence on David Roth. His legacy lives on and his legacy will continue to live on forever. So thank you so much, David Roth, for everything that you've done for Coin Magic. Uh, you've been a massive influence on my career and uh, on behalf of the magic community, thank you.